this morning. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Well, I'm glad this morning. Glad to see a crowd back. Maybe we're getting through the sickness and all the troubles for a little while. God's good. Amen. Brother Tim's coming. He's going to lead us in prayer. Obey God. Jesus on that main line this morning. All you got to do is call him up. Tell him what you want. Because he's still in the giving business. Aren't you glad for him? Aren't you glad for the Spirit? Because without him, where would we be this morning? Hallelujah. God moving in service. Lord, help us to do what you'd have us to do. Oh, God, not only be a hearer, but be a doer. We love you. And we praise you right now for what we're going to receive. Bless the pastors who brings the word. We ask him right now. What did name now? What did name? What did name? Praise the Lord. I'll, I'll take a second and share some, something with y'all. Uh, this past month, God has shown me favor, I guess you could say. And he's good. Uh, it's been about a month. Dan's brother kind of went crazy and calling all hours of the night, this and that, like, who knows where he's at, what he's doing, who he's with, is he okay? Well, God moved on that, and he got a great job in South Carolina, so he's away from here with people that he knows, and he's safe, and we know where he's at, and he's working. Hallelujah! Uh, our water, about a month ago, our water started smelling really nasty. So Dan was putting Clorox in it. We couldn't figure out what it was. Couldn't figure out what it was. It's like, well, we've done, we've had no water many times. So I was like, well, thank God we've got water. Like, if it's stinky, it's okay. I'll be, as long as my clothes don't stink and I don't stink when I get out, I'm good. We got water at least. Okay? So that was like a month. It kept stinking like ugh, crazy. Okay, well, my dishwasher quit. I said, all right, well, I got water. I can wash the dishes. So I was being thankful that I had water to wash my dishes. So, yeah. And I said, Lord, Lord, come on now. Give me a break. The dishwasher was quit. Like, Dan, I was like, Dan, you got to fix this thing. you got to fix it. He's like, I don't know what to do about it. I don't know how to fix it. Well, we called Jonathan's, and he said, the board's probably messed up probably fried you better get you a new one i ordered one on on at lowe's it was supposed to be here on a saturday the dishwasher wouldn't even turn on at this point it was turning on but it wouldn't work wouldn't even turn on at this point it was supposed to be here saturday friday evening i shut the dishwasher and i was like i wonder if this thing will work started right up worked just fine <laughs> worked like brand new i was like well hurried and got on the lows and canceled my new one that was coming. I was like, well, thank you, Jesus. All I had to do was be grateful for what I did have. Yeah. Well, my dryer quit. My dryer quit. This has all been within a, like four weeks span. My dryer quit. It was like being crazy. Wouldn't get my stuff dry. I had to start it over. Start it over. I laid hands on it and I was like, Lord. Lord. And then I said, you know what? I can wash my clothes, and I've got water. I can hang them out to dry. I'm just going to be thankful for what I do have. Yep. Well, it wasn't long. The dryer was working just fine. I was like, yeah. well, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My baby girl right there, she had a dentist appointment. She, had, she has one bad cavity that's pretty icky. Well, about four weeks, about all this same time, this whole same time. She says, Mama, my tooth feels kind of funny. And I looked in there, and she had a big, huge, I mean, it was like sticking out like this far, not an abscess tooth. I said, okay, all right, Lord, you know we have an appointment. Lord, just don't let this hurt her until we can get to the appointment. So I called the dentist. I can't get her in any sooner. I called back, and they're like, she needs an antibiotic. So they called her in amoxicillin. I was like, okay. All right, this will help it not to hurt and everything's fine. They made her an appointment for sooner. I was like, okay, thank you, Lord. Okay, amoxicillin. This is on like a Wednesday. 
church day. A lot of this stuff happened on church day. You know, you know, just real quick. You have no water. You can't take a shower. Okay, but anyway, so it walks the ceiling on that day. Uh, I think it was Thursday morning. We all of us were outside playing or doing something. I looked on her head and she. Oh, well, it was Wednesday before church. Before church, I was brushing her hair. She had a tick on her head. Stuck in. So, me, I'm like not a good tick lady. So I'm like, Cody, Cody, go get it off. So he comes and gets it off of her. Okay. Like three days later, I'm looking at her hair. It's like infected and nasty. And then she has a huge lymph node that's swollen back here. I go take her to the doctor. He's like, well, somehow she's on the exact medication that she needs to be on for an infected tick that could be Lyme's disease or Rocky Mountain spotted fever. And I was like, boy, that God. He knew she needed antibiotics three days before I did. So she was already taking it. She was already taking what she needed. Her tooth hasn't hurt her, none. It's still infected. We go tomorrow, but all of that. So th then, then, then on Saturday, Friday night, she woke up with a fever and all that. She had COVID. Well, she had COVID and strep throat. And this tick thing that he now thought was probably Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Had she not already been on the amoxicillin, it could have been very bad. She could have been very bad sick. I was like, ain't that God? He's protecting her. And I, I went to the doctor because of, I didn't know what if it was the tooth infected or her tick on her head that was making her sick on Saturday morning early. And so she has another antibiotic that she just finished today for the what could have been Rocky Mountain spotted fever. But I was like, man, ain't that good? Like, God's so good. He was already taking care of her with the medicine and needed me to go back to the doctor on Saturday to get this higher powered antibiotic to make sure that the Rocky Mountain spotted fever is covered. So had she not have gotten COVID and strep throat and had a fever, I would have not taken her to the hospital. I was just, I just thank God. He's good. He's good. Hallelujah. And our water does not stink anymore, so God must have moved on that. <laughs> you got to be thankful for the things you do have when other things are messed up. You can be thankful for what you do have. Yeah. Job was a righteous man. The devil couldn't doubt it. He surely loved the Savior. There was no doubt about it. Satan cursed his body from his feet to his head and told him all his children and his cattle were dead. Job's wife said, why don't you curse your God and die? But Job said, woman, you speak like a foolish child. Oh, he ain't ever done me nothing, done me nothing but good. Oh, he ain't ever done me nothing, done me nothing but good, nothing but good. Jesus took him as my Savior, cast my lot to the chosen few, started out for heaven. Soon I was forsaken, my friends left one by one, but the good Lord walked beside me, and he never left me alone. He fed me when I was hungry, he cheered me when I was sad, and he has been the dearest friend that I have ever had. He ain't never
trouble comes, when the trials come, when the tests come, when it's been good, he's been so good, so good to me, he's been good, he's been good, when your friends leave, he's been good, when the trouble comes, when the trials come, when your money's funny, he's still good, he's been good, he's always good, nothing but good, he's been good, always good, he's a good God, he's a good God, he never left me, I come to praise him, I come to thank him. I come to praise him. I come to thank him. He's been good. He's been good. He's been
about you, but I'm glad I can hold on to God's unchanging hand. If anything to hold on to, it's God. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Just hold on to him this morning. Ask me how it is that I'm still standing. I wonder how I made it through the snow. I can boast of any special powers. There's no secret. I just held on. Oh 
means holding on this morning. Holding on to the one that never fails. Never fails. Hallelujah. You know, they was singing that song and, and I thought about, well, Roxanne was talking about the things she'd been going through. It's been kind of the same thing at our house. <laughs> one thing right after another. Somewhere along the way, I decided, well, I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> it don't matter if God moves or if he don't move. If it, if it just keeps going like this, I'm going to live for Jesus. I don't care if I ain't got nothing when it's all over with. <laughs> I'm going to live for Jesus. I mean, knows he's worth it. He's worth it. He's worth it if he don't never do anything. He will. He will move for you. He will move for you. But it don't matter if he does or if he don't, because if he, if he don't, and you're right, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And he said to rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's Book. <laughs> is your name in the book? That's what matters. Not, not how much money you got. Now, we's, we've been planning on a, 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 I'm getting ready to return. We've been planning on a trip. Uh, after I retire, it's going to cost some money. <laughs> and uh, the gas keeps going up. <laughs> keeps Looks like, well, I don't know if I'll be able to make that trip or not. And something else happens. Something else happens. Yeah. Two or three things. I'm talking big money things. But you know, the Lord always, he provides. <laughs> I didn't have to go borrow money to get my stuff fixed. <laughs> Our dishwasher tore up. <laughs> dishwasher tore up. We got a new one. Put it in. Well, guess what? The new one don't have a check valve like the old one did. <laughs> Some dummy left the water on in the kitchen <laughs> running, and it ran over and ran all in the floor. I got up one morning, and I thought, boy, it sounds good. It's raining. <laughs> so I walked through the kitchen. And I stepped in the carpet. It's like a low place between our kitchen and our, our living room. And I stepped in it and it squished up between my toes. And I said, Lord, what now? <laughs> but it's all right. It ain't got nothing to do with my salvation. It ain't got nothing to do with whether it's well or whether it's not well. That ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> Is it well with your soul? That's what matters. Is it well with your soul? You know, we can go to heaven and not have no kitchen. 
These people in Africa ain't got nothing but a dirt floor and an old hut, and they cook on the fire in their, in their tent. <laughs> but we got it made. And our worst, our worst, we better than most everybody else in the whole world. At our very worst. But what matters is my name in the book. Am I in right standing with the Lord? You know, it's not enough to just get your name in the book, but you got to stay with right standing. It's my name in right standing with him. Amen. Hallelujah. I love him this morning. <laughs> I love his presence. It's so sweet in here today. I love him. Hallelujah. Sister Becky, you want to come sing, sister? Give her a cheer as she comes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. They're leading me through paths that I must trod. I have no fear, for Jesus walks beside me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise, they won't worry me. For I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not a word shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Soon I shall hear the call from heaven's portal. Come home, my child, it's the last mile you must trot. I'll fall asleep and wake in God's new heaven, sheltered safe within the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise, they won't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not a word shall harm me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. For I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. Are you sheltered today? Hallelujah. Let the storm clouds rise. Let them rise. <laughs> I'm going to be true, ain't you? Amen. Brother Happy, <laughs> come and testify, brother. Give him a cheer as he comes. Yes, Lord. Somebody tell the Lord you love him this morning. Praise God. I she got singing that song. I mean, all choked up. That's one of the songs my dad used to sing everywhere we went. Praise God. But we definitely got to know that we're sheltered. Amen. Praise God. I, I, I appreciate the Lord this morning. He's been good to us uh, listening to the testimonies. And, uh, last week, brother, I spent... Four days sleeping in the heat. 
because the air condition went out. It finally got so bad, Sister Marcia and the kids left and went and stayed with Pastor Joe. And I told her, I said, you left on the worst night. For some reason, that was the hottest night there was when I was by myself. <laughs> We had fans in the windows and fans in the floors, and it still wasn't cool, but, but God saw us through it, and, and I tell you, the Lord's good. I kept telling Sister Marsha, I said, baby, I said, we need to pray it don't cost a lot of money. Anybody ever had air conditioning work, man? It's expensive. I don't care if it ain't there, but 15 minutes it cost us, and uh, I was flipping through Google. Thank God for Google. And I was flipping through Google, Pastor, and, and there was one that caught my eye. And the name of the company was Cornerstone. And I called them. And I said, uh, I need you to come out, y'all charge to come out. And I said, oh, well, it's just $70 to come out and diagnose your problem. And I, I done called Morris Jenkins and everybody else, and it's close to 100 bucks. And, I said, oh, okay, that's good, that's good. I I'll see y'all Thursday. And uh, I called back to confirm the appointment. And the lady said, well, if you go ahead with the, the repairs, you don't have to worry about paying the $70 for the diagnostics. I was like, oh, great. So, Elder, they come out, and I kept telling Sister Marsha, everybody I talked to, about, just pray it don't cost a lot of money. Pray it don't cost a lot of money. Do you know when that man left there that morning, Thursday morning, it costed me $101.95. God's good, ain't he? So I understand what it's like to sleep without any air conditioning. Amen. I, it was worse than when I was in the Philippines, brother. You was talking about after I was in the Philippines and it was so hot over there. At 4 o'clock in the morning when you get up, it would already be 100 degrees with 101% humidity. Amen. And, and we ought to thank God that we can sit in the air condition this morning. We ought to thank God that we can come to the house of God and praise him with air condition this morning. We ought to thank God we can come with all the great music and the lights and, and the sound and people worshiping because some people don't have what you have this morning. Some people don't have the liberty that we have this morning. We need to thank God for our liberty because slowly and but surely the, this country is trying to take it away from us and we need to lift our hands every chance we get and tell the Lord thank you. We, we've been going through some, some financial issues and Sister Marshall said last night, she said, now you know I work all the time. I've been, I have been work about, I get to go to church once a month. And so we was working yesterday and she does the Uber thing and we was working. She said, well, we'll just work on through and, and so we can make some, some extra money because we got the grandbabies. And I said, I, I could have worked today, but I needed to be in church. I could have worked today, but we needed to be in church. She woke me, are we going? I said, well, do we have the money? And the Lord fixed it and worked out a situation where we could come. See, because we need to be in the house of God. Listen, he don't even know the word that he spoke just a while ago was straight from God. Some of the things you said, Elder, to me was what me and Sister Marcia talked about. Coming here this morning. I believe it was David that said my foot was almost slipped. Almost slipped. I don't know about anybody else or what you've been going through, but my feet have been almost slipped. I believe the scripture says that Satan would wear out the saints. Anybody wore out this morning? I don't know about you, but sometimes it seems like it's a fight just to hold on. Sometimes it's just a fight to just to call on the name of Jesus. Sometimes it's just a fight to look at my brother and tell him I love him. Sometimes it's a fight just to be in the house of God. But I feel like David said my foot was almost slipped. But when I made my bed in hell, you were there with me. 
when I was all alone you were there with me if I make my bed in heaven you're with me if I'm over in the middle of the fire you're with me if I'm in the middle of the storm you're with me David said no matter what I go through you're with me and I have to remind myself like pastor said last night we got to remember that God is with us it gets hard to remember it sometimes when we're going through the fire pastor but son we got to remember God has never left us He's not lost one. We might jump out of his hand. We might get out of his way, but he's not lost one this morning. The word says he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. Praise. I, I got a brother I don't even get to see because of the life I live. Because we try to serve the Lord. and Listen, this thing will cause family to leave you. It will cause friends to leave you. It will separate mother and father, brother and sister. It will separate them all. But honey, as long as we stand for the Lord, it might get hard sometimes. And I don't know about you, but it's been hard here lately, brother. It, it's, been, it's been hard. Anybody? Am I talking to anybody outside of myself? I told Sister March on the way up, I said, sometimes, I said, I said, I'm just a vagabond. Feel like I ain't got nowhere, don't belong nowhere. <laughs> Anybody ever felt that way? You can go and sit in the house of God and, and you feel like you're just, you're just there. You're just there. But the Lord said, he'd never leave us, nor forsake us. Amen. So I'm glad he's a friend. Amen. And then give me a C chord. Uh, Pastor, we'll try this. Amen. Y'all going to, it's going to scare all y'all because I'll never sing a slow song. <laughs> mm. You were there for me through it all. Well, everyone around said. I would fall. You were my friend. You believed in me. When my way grew weak, it seemed steam's gone. You took me by the hand. Led me on. You were my friend. You believed in me. You went the extra mile to prove your love was true. You held out your hands as they drove the nails in you when you could have walked away, turned your back to all my sins. For me, you gave your life. You chose to be my friend. Walked in like a child, so full of fear. You stood by my side and held me near. You were my friend, you believed in me. When my strength seemed weak and my faith was gone, you took me by the hand, Lord, you led me home. You were my friend, 
you believed in me. Come on, anybody ever felt that away? Aren't you glad he's your friend? He went the extra mile to prove your love was true. You held out your hands as they drove the nails in you. When you could have walked away, turned your back to all my sins. For me, you gave your life. You chose to be my friend. Oh, you could have walked away turned your back to all my sins for me you gave your life and you chose to be my friend come on lift your hands and praise him tell him What a friend we have in Jesus. Come on, are you glad he's your friend? Oh, my sins and griefs to bear. Oh, what, what a privilege just to carry oh, everything to God in prayer. Come on and praise him this morning. Aren't you glad he's your friend? Come on, aren't you glad he's a true friend? Come on, we was talking about that on the way up here this morning. What a friend. What a friend is. Aren't you glad we have a friend that's always there? I told Sister Mar, I said, I ain't got a lot of friends. I ain't got a whole bunch of people I can call friends. But I got one that I know is a friend. Aren't you glad he's a friend? Some of us feel like we're not worthy to even call him father. Offer him to call us son. But he said, I'll take you. With all your mess ups, all your faults, all your failures, I'll be your friend. I'll be your Lord. I'll be your Savior. I seen a sign the other day. An elder has stuck at my mind ever since. It says, we don't have more failures than God has grace. You ought to thank him this morning. We love you. you glad he's your friend the Bible says every morning his mercies are new hallelujah I'm glad for that mercy ain't you thank you Lord you means ready to hear the word of God this morning man give a big hand for Wesley Ward now give Jesus a great big hand if you would please you're glad you got a friend in Jesus I said if you got a friend in Jesus 
I said, if you've got a friend in Jesus, you ought to really clap your hands and praise him and love God. Glorify his great name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Blessings to you. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you for those that are standing. We thank God for you. Amen. Will you look at somebody and just tell them, say, I love you, and I'm glad to see you. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be in God's house. Good to see everyone that's with us. Still got some that are missing, some that are out of town, some that are sick, but we're glad that you're here. Is anybody glad to say, I'm here? Amen. And uh, I'm glad that it doesn't matter who shows up. The Bible says if two or three be gathered together in his name that he'd be here. Amen. Is anybody glad that Jesus is here? Can you feel him this morning? Do you? Yeah, I, you say, how do you know he's here? I brought him with me. Amen. He's in my heart. I know he's here. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God for everybody being back with us, those that have been sick. And God brought you out and brought you back. Amen. We ought to clap our hands for that. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord. Come on, Austin, get our offering plate. I want you to get your Sunday morning tithe and offering ready. Amen. If you're watching us by Facebook Live, want to sow uh, your tithe and your offering. The information to give is on the screen. If you're just a visitor, you're watching us, you're part of another church, but want to sow a seed, uh, everything that you sow helps us continue to provide our Facebook Live services, and so we appreciate that giving as well. I mean, glad, has glad for our Facebook Live. Amen. It ain't the same as being here. Come on, somebody. And anybody that's watched it will say, but hey, something's better than nothing. I said something's better than nothing. So uh, we're glad that we're able to provide that. And so we pray that whoever's watching today will be blessed. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the ability to give, God. I'm so glad that you give me a people, Lord, that I don't have to get up here and talk about 30 minutes every Sunday and every Wednesday to, to persuade them to give, but they know your voice, they feel your touch, and they know that this is a good place that you've sent them to support your work, God. Let them continue to operate and work in that principle as they give and sow today. In Jesus' name, and God's people that believe it, said amen. Praise the Lord. That awesome walk among you. Amen. We praise God. It's so good to see Brother Poppy, Sister Marsha. Amen. Great surprise. Amen. It's just such a great blessing. We thank God for them coming. It takes about two, two and a half hours to get here, right? About that. And so they made the trip up. We thank God for them coming. And uh, they've been trying to help me get a tent lot off the mountain. Amen. So it might be something in the works for the next two or three weeks. Hello, somebody. Amen. The old pastor's back at it. Like, my God, ain't you done that tent? Never. Never will I be done with the tent. All right? So you just... Man, might as well just bury it with me. If you ain't nobody else ain't going to carry it on, just put it in the ground with me. Can someone say amen? Because I love it. Amen. We reach people that nobody else is able to reach, that most church services ain't able to reach. Come on, somebody. And the power of God moves, and we thank God for that. Amen. Give God a great big hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. It's uh, good to see uh, Brother Charlie and Sister Deborah back with us. We've been missing them. Amen. Give them a great big hand clap. Uh, good to see Sister Margaret back there, amen, she's feeling some better, and I thank God that she's here, and uh, just each and every one of you. If you have your Bibles, I won't preach real long, um, but I will preach what God's given me, and uh, we've been talking about Samson, and we're going to continue to talk about him, uh, in Judges chapter 15, Judges chapter 15, praise the Lord. chapter 15, and uh, we're going to read verses 9 through 13, and we'll continue to preach uh, through the rest of the chapter, but we're just for reading context, we're going to read from there, amen? Judges chapter 15, and verse 9, if you've got it, say, I got it says, Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why are you come up against us? And they answered to bind Samson, Are we come up to do to him as he had done to us? 
Then 3,000 men of Judah went up to the rock of Edom and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? And what is it that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand, but surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. Can somebody say amen to the reading of God's word? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your blessings, Lord. We thank you for your power and your grace, God. Come on, pray. Don't listen to me. Y'all know better. Come on, pray. I want to hear you. Come on, pray like it's your last service. Pray like you really need to hear something from God. Come on. Feel something when you're praying right there. Yeah, you just need to be pushed a little bit. Come on, pray. I may not even have to preach if you'll pray. Move, God. By your power and by your spirit, let them have ears to hear. Eyes to see and hearts to believe. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands. Amen. If you believe that God heard your prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. I want to preach on the subject. Um, it's 12 o'clock, so can you give me a little bit of time? I know service has been a little long thus far, but that's all right. I said, that's all right. We come here for the word, amen. Come here to get something. Uh, I want to preach on this subject, and it's not going to make any sense from the text that we read, but it will make sense by the time we're done. Uh, I want to preach from this thought, pick it back up. Amen. Tell somebody, say, pick it back up. Uh, find somebody else that might be awake, and just because that didn't sound like he was awake, find somebody that is awake and say, pick it back up. Pick it back up. Get it, get it back. If you parents ain't going to do it, the kids will. Praise God. They'll at least hear what I'm saying. Amen. If they get it, that's all that matters. Come on. Amen. I think sometimes the children get more than us adults do. Hello, somebody. Man, pick it back up. Last Sunday, we dealt with uh, Samson's vows to God as a Nazarite. That word Nazarite means to be set aside, to not be a part of everybody. To be used by God is sometimes to be... Uh, be alone with God and so sometimes God will get you to a place where you're not with everybody and that you're just with him and, and I think sometimes and don't get mad at me but we use the church for the wrong reason we use it to come here and build our relationships with each other but this is not our house this is his house and so when we come here it shouldn't be if we have anybody as a friend in this building or not, if this is where God sent us, this is His house. Hello, somebody. So when we come to God's house, it's not about us communicating with each other and making just great relationships, and that is a byproduct. But the greatest thing about coming here is to get in relationship with Him. And I think that makes God really upset is when we come to church and expect, well, I ain't got no friends or I ain't got nobody to eat with, I ain't got nobody to talk to. I thought this was about God. I'm going to preach in here today, all right? I'm going to pastor you a minute. And that's why sometimes you don't get from church. What you need from church is you're caught up on the other relationships instead of getting in relationship with God. Yeah. That would be like uh, what, what happens when we... It would be like somebody coming to visit me at my house, coming to my house and then getting on the phone with somebody else and talking to them the whole time they're at my house. 
And I want to ask, why did you come to my house? If you wanted to talk to somebody else, you should have went to their house. So when we come here, it's not about, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about things that we've had going on throughout the week and all those kind of things that's going to happen, but that should not be the extent of why we come. This is not a social club. This is not a social club. We're not here to make everybody feel good. We're here to get in alignment with God and get something with God. And if anything else happens, that's great and fine. If I have great relationship with people outside of this building that goes with this building, that's great. But if nobody is my friend in this place and nobody talks to me, I'm not coming here because of that. I'm coming here because I know I'm going to get a word. I know I'm going to get touched. I know I'm going to get help to get me through life. Can somebody say amen? And so why I said that, I don't know. But well, it was good for somebody. Look at someone say, you needed it. Amen. Tell them, say, you needed it. And so when we start understanding the, the Nazarite vows, the, uh, to be set aside sometimes to be alone, and so you don't always have to be with everybody as long as you're with God. And so we find out the three Nazarite vows was he was not supposed to cut his hair. He was not supposed to drink any strong drink like liquor, wine, anything like that, any alcoholic beverage, and he was not supposed to contaminate himself with the dead. Well, we find later that uh, the, the, the lion comes up. The Bible says that he defeats this lion. And then after he defeats this lion, he goes about his own way. And when he comes back inside the carcass of a lion was some honey. Some bees had made some honey. And the Bible says that he does not really see where the honey is. He just sees the honey. And so he sticks his hand into the carcass of the lion and starts getting something that is living, but in something that is dead. And you got to watch the source of what you're eating from. Because sometimes what you think is a good thing is actually something that has an interior motive to put you into a bad thing. And Samson didn't know it, but he was breaking a vow by sticking his hand in there to eat the honey. So we preached last week, you got to leave the honey alone. I said, leave the honey alone. Tell somebody that again. Tell them, say, this is good preaching. Say, leave it alone. Just because it tastes good don't mean it's God. Everything that's good is not God. Oh, come on. And everything is bad is not the devil. There's some things that God does to you that don't feel too good, and it is God. Sometimes you got to leave some stuff. you got to turn that radio station. you got to get rid of that... You got, to, you got to leave because just because it feels good and sounds good and gives you a certain feeling doesn't mean it is good. You're contaminating yourself. And so Samson then, he doesn't tell nobody that he does this. He doesn't tell his mother and father because his mother and father knew that he was a Nazarite. I'm going to take my time. So if you got to go somewhere, wave at me on your way out. I'm going to take my time, all right? Uh, and so as, as he's, uh, it, he gets back and he brings honey and gives it to his mother and father. And his mother and father uh, eat it, but they don't know the source there of it. So God doesn't hold them accountable. Because if he would have told them the source, they would have said, Oh no, Samson, you ain't supposed to be doing this because you're a Nazarite. And see, that's why some of you don't tell folks stuff. Because you don't want to be held accountable. That's why you need a pastor. Because you need to be held accountable. You don't need to be able to do everything you want to do. You don't need some... Oh, don't like me. You need somebody, a real friend and a real person that has your best interest in mind. Say, I love you, but you don't need to be doing that. I love you, but you don't need to be watching that, talking about that, doing that, being that. You need to leave that stuff alone. I love you enough to tell you that you don't need to do it. And that's why some people want to keep secretly sinning, don't want to come to church, don't want to hear nobody, because they want to keep doing what they want to do. And they find in themselves becoming contaminated with a dead thing when God said, I brought you out of being dead into the marvelous light and you don't need to be going back and messing with something you've already conquered that was Samson's problem is that he had defeated this lion the spirit of God came upon him he had defeated this lion uh, and then when he, after he defeated it then he come back and he began to mess with something that God already gave him the victory of and when we get in trouble is when we start going back to stuff that God already gave us the victory over You start thinking about it. You start talking about it. He's like, I wonder what, how they're doing. I wonder what's going on over there. I wonder, oh yeah. And then all of a sudden you begin to get around what God had already set you free from. 
and you're getting messed up. Well, he gets this, and this will set this, the rest of this message up. He gets a, 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 a riddle together about it and thinks he's going to win some clothing and some good stuff from uh, this brethren that is supposed to be at his, uh, his wedding shower, and they get ready to get married to his wife. And, um, and he says, well, I'm going to give you a riddle. And we, we read the riddle. And if, he was, if they was to figure it out, they was, he was supposed to give all them clothing and raiment. And if, but if they couldn't figure it out, they were supposed to give it all to him. Well, they came to his wife in secret and made her, vexed her to get the answer for it. And they get the answer and, and, and tell him. And so he has to end up giving up because what he thought he was going to gain, he lost. Oh, man. Oh, man. When you start messing with the wrong thing, what you think you gain, you lose. You lose more than what you have. So he gets upset, and he gets upset with his wife, and he, and he leaves, the Bible says. And this is where we're going to start with our text just for a few moments. He, he leaves his, his uh, uh, after he gets mad at her, because she tells, he finally figures out, he, she's the only one that told, and they figured it out. and that's, So he figured out that she was the one, and she told him, said, I'm sorry, they's going to kill me and everybody. And, and so he, I told, and so he leaves, and the Bible says after he gets over being mad about it, uh, that he comes back, and when he comes back to take his wife to finally get married, he discovers that she's been given to someone else. Not only did he lose clothing, and he lost the woman that he loved by messing with the dead thing. I ain't got time to keep talking on all this, all right? And so Samson gets a little upset with this whole situation, the Bible says that uh, he gets some firebrands and gets some foxes, 300 foxes, according to the text that we read. And he gets the, the firebrands and sets them on fire. When he sets them on fire, he puts them to the foxes' tails, and they ran through the corn, the standing corn of the Philistines, which was uh, that had charge over them at the time, and had uh, that they had them in bondage for the longest time. And it goes through, and it burns the fields of the Philistines on fire. Now, this is, this is the whole point of this whole thing. I want to show you something right here. Now, now, what God did was He got Samson angry to do something about what he had lost. Samson's whole reason for being born, according to what we preached, is to bring deliverance to the people of God from the Philistines. And so now, it is finally starting to happen. God has allowed some things to go, not go Samson's way to get Samson to a place to say, well, I'm tired of this and I got to do something. I got to start getting in my purpose and getting in my will. And see, sometimes God will allow some things not to go your way to get you into a place to say, all right, God, I'm willing to do what you want because up until this moment, Samson has been about himself, about his own wife and his own clothing and doing his own thing. But now he takes some firebrands. I know it was motivated in the anger of losing his wife but he takes something and says well now I'm going to do something and I believe that it is time that the reason that God is shaking up some things among us is he's wanting to see what do I got to do to get you to do what I've called you to do how much do I got to oh come on somebody what do I got to make go crazy in your life to get you into the place where you're going to set the devil's fields on fire is there anybody come that says I'm going to make up my mind to set the devil's fields on fire I know I made a mistake and I know I messed up but I'm glad that the God that I serve has still called me to do something a lot of people in Samson's day would have just gave up and said well I can't do nothing because I messed up but Samson got up and said I made a mistake but I'm going to still do something for God and I've come to tell somebody that today you need to make up in your mind that no matter how many mistakes I have made I'm still here and I'm going to get up and I'm going to do something for God. And so he does this, sets them on fire, fight, starts fighting the Philistines. The Philistines come up and actually kill his wife and his family that, and all the people that, that he was supposed to be a part of. And so Samson fights them some more. And now this is where the text gets interesting. The Philistines have now come... And the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah 
and spread themselves in Lehi. They, they come up uh, to Judah and to the camp of Judah and said, we're coming here to fight. Now listen to what happens. And the men of Judah come out and said, why have you come up against us? Why have you come up against us? And they answered to, and said, To bind Samson are we come up to do to him as he has done to us. Mm. See, now look what happens here. When the, when the Philistines show up to take Samson, what should have fueled the Judah tribe and the Israelites should have been, Oh, so Samson is now doing what God wants him to do. And so instead of having conversation with the enemy, can I preach it here, they should have rallied themselves together and said, well, we're going to do what God wants us to do. We ain't taking this no more. So, but they did not. So let's take a look here. So said, we've come to bind him. And listen to what they said. And so we, we have come up against us. And they said, we're going to come bind Samson. And so 3,000 men of Judah went up to the rock of Edom where Samson was at and said to Samson, listen to what they said. Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? Oh, my Lord. They have been in bondage so long. They had been in under the Egyptian, or excuse me, the Philistine bondage so long that they called the Philistines their rulers. When in all actuality, it was the God of heaven. Oh, my Lord in heaven. That was their ruler. It was the God that they served, that the one that they should have been submitting to. But they had been in bondage and had been comfortable in bondage so long that they had decided to come out from under the rule of God and find themselves under the rule of the enemy. And now they're trying to come against somebody that's trying to set them free. And that sounds like the modern day church if I've ever heard it. We have become so comfortable in our sin and in in the way that we do it and when somebody gets up with some anointing to run off the enemy that is keeping your family bound and your marriage bound and your mind bound and your ministry bound we get upset and tell the, those to sit down and shut up but I made up in my mind I will not be bound anymore I hear an old song that just came in my spirit why should I be oh why should I be bound tell me why should I be oh why should I be bound He's gave me the Holy Ghost I shouldn't be bound I've come to declare to somebody today That it's time to make up in your mind That I will not be ruled by this spirit anymore But I'm going into my house I'm going to my job I'm going to my school Come on children I'm going to every place that I'm at And I'm telling the Philistine devil You're getting out Because I'm not going to be bound anymore This has been one-sided Way too long This is been the devil has been beating us and whipping us it's time to get up and it's time to fight back it's time to say I'm going to made up in my mind I'm going to come into the enemy's camp and I'm going to take back can I can, can I teach you a little something that you need to do now, anybody here ever been in a physical altercation with somebody that means a fight. You ever fought anybody? Come on, raise your hand. You ain't always been safe. Yeah. Get in a fight. You, you know what my, my, my dad taught me? He said, now, son, if it's worth having, it's worth fighting for. And he told me something. He said, now, if you, if you get in a fight, all right, you make sure you fight. And he told me something one time. He ain't here today. He said, I got a good way for you to get, a good chance for you to get the victory. I said, what? Well, he said, if you know you're about to go into an altercation, Swing first. Swing first. Because if you get the blow first, come on somebody, your chances of getting the ultimate victory, if you're always responding, oh, I feel God in this house. If you're always responding to what somebody's doing, then you're always on the defense. He said what you sometimes got to do, if you see him coming, you got to swing first. This is what Samson's done. He said, I'm not waiting anymore. But I'm, I want to know, is there anybody saying, I'm going to swing first. I made up in 
in my mind that I'm not sitting back and waiting anymore. I'm not going to wait for another bad day. I'm not going to wait for another bad report. I'm not going to wait for somebody else to talk about me. I'm not going to wait for when things don't go my way. But I made up in my mind I'm going to swing first. You say, preacher, how do you swing first? You get up and give God a praise. That's how you swing first. You take off running through the building. That's how you swing first. You get up in your prayer closet and say, I ain't going to pray when something bad happens, but I'm going to be prayed up for when the enemy comes. I'm going to swing first. Grab your neighbor's hand. Shake it like you're going to take it and say, swing first, honey. Quit waiting. Quit trying to duck. Quit trying to dive. You've got the power. They didn't, you didn't go into the Philistine camp. They come into your house. They came into your job. It's come into your life. And you ought to say, I ain't waiting. I'm swinging first. You, I'm running you out. You got to loose my family. Uh, I got to quit. <laughs> Samson swung first. I'm going to close. Samson swung first. You got to swing first sometimes. You got to get on the offensive. You got to say, okay, I ain't sitting back waiting no more. I'm going to get up and do something about this. I, I, I'm going I'm to put the enemy. And so the enemy comes over into the land. And so here they, they come to, they said, okay, don't worry. Don't, don't fight us. We're going to go deal with Samson. Listen to what happens. They're going to preach this. And so three and three thousand men of Judah went up to the rock of Edom and said to Samson, No, it's not that the Philistines are the rulers over us. What is it that you have done unto us? Hmm. They're blaming Samson. What is that that you've done to us? And he said to them, as they did unto me, so have I done unto them. I believe it's time to return to favor. If the devil ain't going to give me no peace, I ain't going to give him none. If the devil ain't going to let me have no joy, I ain't going to give him none. If the devil ain't going to let me... It's been one-sided way too long. And so... They said, so what have you done to them? And he said, we've come to bind thee. This got me. We've come to bind thee that we may deliver thee to the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said to them, swear to me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. Huh, that's got me. Instead of getting with Samson, they came. And bound Samson. What's wrong with the church is that we are tying each other up and delivering each other over to the will of our enemies because we don't want to fight ourselves. We don't want to pray ourselves. We don't want to fast ourselves. We don't want to preach ourselves. So what we're going to do is those that's trying to do something for God, we'll just say we won't we won't support them. We won't get with them. We won't get in the fight with them. But what we'll do is say, "All right, enemy. Don't, don't, don't all right, Philistines. Don't don't fight us. We'll take care of them." And you know what's a shame is the devil ain't got to do much in church anymore to get half the people to quit. Oh, I'm preaching in here because we're too busy fighting ourselves. We're too busy gossiping about ourselves. We're too busy We're going, oh, I'm talking in here, trying to find what's wrong with everybody else's life and trying to figure out what's wrong. And that's why the church is being defeated. It's not that the Philistines, the Philistines hadn't had to do anything. They just showed up and the so-called church at that moment said, we'll go take care of Samson for you. Instead of getting up and saying, well, if Samson's fighting you, we're going to fight you because we know God is on his side and God that is on his side is the same God that's on our side. And let me tell you, what real church hurt is. Real church hurt is someone not shaking your hand. That ain't church hurt. That's you being a baby. Real church hurt is when you're gossiping about somebody and they don't know it. When you're doubting somebody and they don't know it. Oh, I don't. That's that. And that's real church hurt is when you're secretly being manipulated and you don't know it. That's what's wrong with the church. So they came. And they bound up Samson. He said, Samson, we're going to take you down. We don't want to deal with this no more. So we're just, we're going to bind you up. We're going to bind the man of God up. We ain't going to help you. We're going to tie you up. We're going to keep you, you know, in check. And that's what's happening. 
to real men and women of God across this country and across this world is there's so-called church folk. Let me tell you something. The Bible says in the last days that many would deny what? The faith. It didn't say they would deny the church. Which means the church can be full of people. That deny the faith. Oh my God. It can be full of people that don't believe in this thing. It can be full of people that don't really want to see this thing. And don't really want this thing to go. Oh you say I'm part of the church. And you tell the day you got saved. And you tell the day you got filled with the Holy Ghost. But you don't want to do nothing with it. You just want to say. Oh no, no. We, this is the way it's always been. And we don't want to rock the boat. And we don't want to mess anything up. I've come to rock the boat. I have come over here to rock the boat today. To tell you that it's time to get out of our comfort zone. On, and it's time to quit fighting each other and binding each other up and it's time to look for where the spirit of the Lord is there's liberty and I'm tired of this binding up spirit I'm tired of people come to church and judging and say I don't want to praise God like that then why did you come to this church because you ought to know what we are when you walk in the door if you ain't part of us go ahead I'll wave at you I'll pray for you but I want somebody that's on my team I want somebody that believes in what I believe in I don't need somebody to come here bind me up and talk about me and try to keep me from doing God's will. I need somebody to say we're with you and we're going to fight to the end. Is there any fighters in here that says we're not giving up? I got to close. That's what's really hurting the church. Not that somebody didn't ask you to bring your potato salad to the dinner. That ain't church hurt. That ain't persecution. Somebody... Hello, somebody. <laughs> Real church hurt is when we deliver ourselves over to the will of the enemy. Instead of defeat, instead of praying each other out, we say, here, take them. <laughs> yeah. You know why? You know why they was delivering Samson over to the will of their enemy? It's because Samson was revealing their lack of effort and work and support and that's why some people get mad at other church folk is because when other church folks start doing something for God it actually reveals how lazy can I preach in here that's all right I'm here to help you Woo. So don't get mad that somebody's doing something for God. Say, my God, what can I do? What can I get up? I ain't going to just sit back. And, what can I do? And, but see, some of you, you got to have the spotlight. You can't be number two. You got to be number one. And so since you ain't number one, you ain't going to give your full effort in being number two. But let me tell you, when you become number one, you're going to have a bunch of the same kind of number twos that you did. Or you reap what you sow until you can support what you're under. God's not going to elevate you. And if you happen to get a place, you're not going to get nobody to support you. Because what you reap, is what you sow. Somebody's like, I ain't coming back to this church. Well, that's all right. I got you while I got here. So Samson says, okay. And Samson said to them, swear to me that you will not follow me yourselves. In other words, all right, you're going to bind me up, but please don't kill me. Duh. Please don't kill me. You're going to bind me up. So they bound him up. The Bible says they put him in two new cords. Mm -hmm. And they bound him with two new cords. And they brought him up from the rock. Now I'm going to preach. All that was introduction. I made you mad. Hopefully I make you glad. But that's all right. So I want to read a little bit. And so when they brought him up from the rock and they came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. Woo! And when the Philistines shouted against him, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Oh my God Almighty. The Spirit of God comes upon him. They shouted against him. And when they shouted against Samson, the Spirit of God came upon him. Him. Mm. He is bound in the, in the bondage by his own people. But here the Philistines shouted against Samson. And when that happens, the Spirit of God comes upon him. The Spirit of God does not come upon him until the Philistines shouted against him. And see, some of you, you're like, man, why is God allowing the devil to do what he's doing? Because what that does is it allows the 
spirit of God to get upon you. See, some of you don't get anointed until you start going through something. Some of you, the spirit of God doesn't come upon you until you get in a battle. But when you get, when the enemy comes in like a flood, that's what the book says. Then the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard. Here comes Samson in by his own men bound, walking in with new cords on him, and the enemy shouts against him. But in the middle of the enemy shouting against him, the power of God comes upon Samson. And I come to tell you, if you're surrounded by your enemy and things are going wrong, God said to tell you, get ready for my spirit. Because I like to move in chaos. I, I moved on the face of the deep when there was nothing but darkness. I know how to move when nothing else is moving. I know how to step in it. Some of you wonder, why is God letting it get so bad? Because when his spirit moves upon you and he brings you out, you're going to say, it wasn't mama. You're going to say, it wasn't daddy. You're going to say, it wasn't the pastor. But what you're going to get up and say, that it was the hand of God that got on my life. Oh, Jesus. Somebody throw your hand up and say, lay your hand on me, Jesus. I, I don't mind. I don't mind. Oh, I don't mind that God lay his hand on me. See, that's what some of you need. You need a good dose of the Holy Ghost. And it's not after the battle is over, but in the middle of the battle. I know the enemy's shouting against you. I know you're getting all kinds of bad reports. I know everything ain't perfect in your marriage. And I know your children are acting like hellions. But God said to tell you, I like to move when nobody thinks I'm going to move. I like to show up when nobody else thinks. I'm going to show up and shout in this house. God Almighty, can I preach in here? Listen to what happens. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily. Somebody say mightily. Look at someone and say, get ready for a mighty move. Get, get ready for something great. There's a mighty move of God that's coming. Because what you're dealing with ain't normal. What you're dealing with ain't easy. What you need is a mighty move of God. And it said, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and listen and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire and his bands was loose from his hands all of us I feel God come upon me all of a sudden he gets in the middle of the Philistines with the with the tribe of Judah that's standing over watching him not helping him but all of a sudden it didn't matter if the tribe of Judah was helping him or not. All he had to do was rely on the power of the Spirit of God. And God told me to tell you quit crying about who ain't helping you. Quit crying about who ain't supporting you. Quit crying about who ain't talking to you. And say, hey, that'll be alright. The pile as long as the Spirit gets upon me. And the Bible says that when the Spirit of God came upon him, what was on him came off of him. What had bound him up all of a sudden came off of him and I come to tell you where the spirit of the Lord is thank God there's liberty I feel a breakthrough in this place I feel that God is setting somebody free give somebody a high five and say you're leaving this thing free you're coming out of this thing free. I know you're winning bound I know you're winning tied up I know you're winning with new cords on you fresh tight cords oh but God said to tell you that you're leaving this thing free cause my spirit is gonna loose you my anointing is gonna set you free somebody ought to take a few seconds clap your hands lift up your voice and shout freedom 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 in your house freedom on your job Freedom in your mind, freedom in your spirit, freedom in your body. God said, I'm going to free you. I'm not loosing part of you, but I'm going to loose all of you. (laughs) 
Oh, will you grab somebody's hand and say, are you ready to have some church? Oh, God. He becomes free. He becomes, listen, and the new courts. Now, they put new, new courts. Has anybody been dealing with something new lately? You've been dealing with something you ain't ever had to deal with before. You're having to go through something that's never been on you before. These were not old courts. And I'm glad they weren't old courts. You would say, why? Because if they were old, raggedy courts, and Josh, they would have said, well, Samson got his own self free. If it had been stuff that had little nicks and cracks in it, an old dried up rope, then they would have said, oh, anybody could have broke out of that. But when they wrapped him in new cords, it was something that you could not easily break as a man. Oh, but when the Spirit of God got on Samson, they knew that this ain't Samson doing it. Because it's not by might, and it's not by power, but it is by the Spirit of the almighty God God sent me to tell you that you may be dealing with something new but I'm going to show you my glory in it I'm going to reveal my power in it somebody ought to clap your hands and shout hallelujah but let's look. Let, can we take a? Can we look a little bit more? It says it came mightily upon him, and the cords were loose from off of his hands. And listen to what Samson does. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. Do you not see what happened? He did not get free and run away. Oh God! He did not get loose and went and hid from the. He did not get his deliverance and run and hide and not tell anybody. But after he got delivered, he said, well, God delivered me. And the reason he delivered me is for me to do something about what I mean. And God said to tell you, I'm not freeing you so you can go back home and run and hide and get under the bed. But the reason I'm loosing you is I'm loosing you to do something about what you're going through. Shake your neighbor's hand. And say, oh neighbor, it's time to do something. You can complain about it all you want. You can cry about it all you want. You can hide if you want to. But your problem ain't going away. The same enemy that showed up one time will show up another time. The reason God has loosed you so you can do something about it. I've come to find out something about God. He'll do part of the work. But the rest is up to you. And I've come to tell you, greater written the church that there's some things that God will do but there's some things that God will not do because it's up to you will you point at your neighbor and tell him say hey neighbor it's up to you and so when Samson gets free he said man this is a good I feel something on me he said I, I got something on me and he grabs up a new jawbone I feel like having church he grabs up a jawbone of a donkey and he begins to defeat the Philistines now look at this I would have thought a sword would have been a good thing I would have thought a spear would have been a good weapon I would have thought a rock would have been a good weapon but God allows him to use a jawbone of a donkey mm, a jawbone is a bone that's in the donkey's mouth and area and the only way the jawbone is exposed is if the donkey is dead so the jawbone that he gets is dead oh but when he gets it in his hand what was dead then then it becomes alive see God is wanting to show you you don't have to have what you think you need to get the victory some would say I can't do nothing because I ain't got a sword some would say I can't do nothing because I ain't got a spear some would say I can't do nothing because I ain't got a rock but Samson said if it's available I'll use it to get the victory and God said to tell you today that if you'll use what I provide I'll give you the victory you don't have to have a sword all you need is a jawbone all you need is something that don't look the part, it don't act the part, it don't seem like God can use it, but God said I want you to use it, if you believe that God's about to use you and use something in your hand that you didn't see coming, take a good praise break right now and give him glory for the victory that belongs to you
He found a new jawbone. The Bible says he picks up that jawbone and begins to slay those Philistines. Mm. He didn't slay them all at one time. But one by one, little by little, moment after moment, he slays them. And I believe they shouted against him when he came in. Remember that? But I believe their cry came a little bit different. When he got free. I believe they started shouting in another kind of way. Do you hear what I'm saying? Oh my God. Oh, at first they were shouting and telling him that. Oh he had nothing big. Look, look, look at Samson. He, he ain't that anointed. Look at Samson. Oh his own people got him bound. Look at Samson. Oh he's got little new cards on him. He can't do nothing. They were talking all kinds of trash. But when he got free and got a job hold. I believe Brother Papa here. That they said oh my God. The man of God has showed up. Oh my God. God, he's whipping me and beating me. And I'll come to tell you, get ready. Your enemy's about to sing a different song. I know he's been talking in your ear, telling you you ain't nothing. Telling you that you are nobody. Telling you that you ain't going to get the victory. But God sent you here to tell you to get ready to hear a different tune. The enemy's about to say, leave me alone. Quit praying. Quit fasting. Quit preaching. Quit dancing. Quit shouting. Oh, you're killing me. Everybody stand. I'm done. And Samson, after he slew a thousand men therewith, I'm going to finish with this. Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. Listen to what happens. And it came to pass, when he made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramoth Lehi. So the jawbone that he had, he takes it, throws it away. He thinks that it's done with. Mm. Listen to what happens. And he was so athirst. And he called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance unto the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. Listen to what happens. But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout, and he drunk. His spirit came again and he revived. Wherefore he called the name therefore Enkanar, which is in Lehi unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. The same thing that he got the victory out of, he threw it away. But God said, he called the God said, I'm going to die now, I'm thirsty. Because when you get the victory, it's, it's depleting. Oh, yeah. Getting the victory over something is tiring. It'll pull it out of you. And he said, I'm tired, God. And God said, get the jaw. Pick up the jawbone. And the Bible says, out of the jaw, God clave a hollow place in that jawbone. And out of that jawbone came water. Out of the thing that he thought that God was done using, he had to pick it back up. God said to tell the church, I ain't done yet. Pick it back up. Pray again. I ain't, I ain't done with prayer. Pick it back up. Fast again. I ain't done with fasting. Pick it back up. Praise me again. If it worked before, oh my God, it'll work again. If God used it before to give you the victory, it'll get, he'll use it again. Tell somebody, just grab somebody and look at him and say, neighbor, pick it back up. God's not done with you yet. You've got to pick it back up. God said to tell you, I've got more to do in your life. I didn't give you all this power for you to die. You just got to pick it back up and use it again. You got to got to use it again. You got to use it again. He had to pick it back up. Pick back up your joy. Pick back up your peace. Pick back up your power, your anointing, your gifts. God said to tell you today, learn from Samson. It's all right. I'm not going to give up, but I'm going to pick it back up. 
I'm going to allow God to use it because the way God used it the first time was not the same way God used it the second time. And we get so caught up on the way that God does it. Throughout the New Testament, Jesus moved for people. Some of them had the same conditions, but he moved for them different ways. You know why? Because if he'd have done it the same way all the time, we'd have said that's the only way. Think about if all Jesus did to blind men was spit in their eyes. He did. He did spit in, he spit in one man's eye. That's what he did. But if think about it, he'd have done that. Though. There was other blind men that he told them to go the way that they was healed, told one to go wash in the pool of Salem, told them. You know, but, but if he'd have just spit in the eyes, and we, there would be people that today would start a whole reformation, spitting in the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ Association. Come on, somebody. Because we think that's the only way. We get so caught up in the only way. Oh, well, this is the only way God can do it. God told me to tell you, not so. If you get caught up in one way only, you'll die. If Samson had not been willing to pick up the jawbone, he would have died. Mm. But he said, all right. God said, oh, no, I got something. Pick up the jawbone again. And I'll use it. Will you slip your hands up to heaven real quick? Tell me something. God sent somebody here today to tell you you got to pick it back up. That you can't just kind of look around and, and judge what God has done on what God is wanting to do in your life. But He's here to speak to you today. He sent you here to touch you today. To anoint you today. To tell you you got to pick it back up. That you got to Say, all right, I may have been bound by my own people, but the Spirit of God got up on me, and since it got up on me, I got the victory. But I just can't give up, because God's not done with me yet. But I'm going to pick it back up. When He threw it down, when you throw something down, you know what you got to do? you got to reach down. I heard the Lord say to get out of your seats and come up here and get in this altar and reach down. And say, I'm going to pick it back up. I'm going to get on my knees and get what I need from God. Three, two, one, get out of your seat. Come on up here quickly. And cry out to God and say, God, I'm going to pick this thing back up. I'm going to pick my prayer life back up. I'm, I'm going to pick my, my praise back up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick my dance back up. I, I threw it down thinking that you was done with it. I, and that's what the church has done as a whole. We, we, we move, we've tried to move on from what God is still wanting to use in our life. God said to tell you, I want to use what I've already used in your life. But I want to use it in a different way. As they play. I want you to just call on God. Come on quickly. Call on them. Come on, pray. Come on, pick it back up. Don't give up, pick it up. While you're down there and on your knees saying, God, when I get up, I'm getting up with that, that anointing. I'm getting up with that power. I'm getting up with that strength. I'm getting up with the power of your spirit, oh God. Dwayne, go lay through hands and lay on the people. Tim, lay hands on the people. Ask God to forgive you for throwing it down. Throwing down your praise. Throwing down the thing that God used before in your life. Say, God, I, I'm sorry.
Slip your hands up. But come on, lift them hands up and worship him as they sing. Tim, go lay hands on Mark. Or Margaret. Obey God, Tim. Hallelujah. Clouds may rise and the storm. 